the all-new Audi A8, a car that sits between tradition, classic sedan building style and a very advanced technology. We will experience it in exterior, interior, driving ourselves and being driven. A very exciting episode, I can promise you. And everything of that on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars today with me, with Thomas. So join us on a very special beginning also because we will start with the chauffeur driving because this is also what this one here, the A8L today, is all about. And of course, everything of that will be in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Today's episode of Auto Crew is starting a little bit differently because the all-new Audi A8 is also about being chauffeured and so that's the thing I'm testing today at the very first. So and here we are in the rear and got the front passenger seats a little bit more well it's just a little in the front, but you see as this one here is the, also the long version, has plenty of space in front of my knees. That's the most important thing. We also got a rear seat in for entertainment system with those integrated tablets here. You can watch some multimedia functions. And of course, you can adjust this rear seat here in so many ways. There's a very soft cushion you can also lean onto and I can adjust the seat right here. And when you're standing still, you know, at the red traffic light, you hear nothing. Sound insulation is really great. So, I can, can make myself more comfortable and start sleeping, for example. Um, there will also be versions where you can put the front seat all the way into the front, also flip it and then put your feet on it. That's also available. At the moment, and I'm, you know, I don't want to sleep that much, still want to stay awake. So I can also put it upright again. See, when it's too sunny outside, I can move up that shade or move it down again. I also got this middle console here where I can again adjust the seat, for example, make it even steeper from the, from the backrest or also from just the seating area. So if I want to control it individually and also can put in the lumbar support. And now I would say I can just enjoy the ride, enjoy the silence. Is there some champagne here? Let's see. Hmm. No champagne. Well, I'm ain't drinking champagne anyway, so <laughs> I'm not that, that disappointed. But that would have been a nice feature, wouldn't it? Mad wood is being used right here. And of course, you could theoretically also, you know, have enough room to work as well. If you um, maybe want to use some of the function here on the inside, the beverage holder. Also, I could charge a laptop here, for example. Charge my phone with inductive charging, two USB slots. 
So how does it really feel when sitting in the rear here? Yes, it's extremely comfortable. The A8 comes with the air suspension from standard and you do feel that because also here on the rear axle it's really floating. Again, traffic outside here in Valencia, you hardly hear anything. Nice illumination. So you can see I also get some light because I've turned on the light. This special reading light that can be adjusted also. Actually also one technology piece. And this is also what's coming up in this very review because this car is actually packed with so much technology. There's really a lot, of to, lot to talk about. And of course, there's always, you know, the discussion, where is technology really useful and where is it too much? I would say, let's experience that together. So the front grille has become even larger, this huge single frame grille, really an open fish mouth, you can also uh, tell that. This of course wants to stress the strength of this vehicle and they still use a lot of big engines indeed. The headlights come standard with LED, those ones here are the optional, then you get the matrix LED, and the top one would be the laser light, this one here is the top spec also with a very interesting lighting signature. Also showed you some, some shots at night, how this one plays out from the signature. So really interesting artwork and everything you can see here is so sharply designed. So it is somewhat traditional on the one hand, but then again with those sharp edges and very clean design lines, also has a lot of elegance, and also some, you know, a lot of modern features here, at least in the front. So this new generation of the A8 has grown just a little bit 3.7 centimeters if you compare it to the previous generation. The overall length now is for the normal A8 4 meters 17 or 17 foot or this one here the A8L 4 meters 30 or 17 foot 4. That means 30 centimeters more in the wheelbase. You can see that the rear door is way longer. We are showing you the A8L now with the petrol engine today because this one will be also among the most significant models for the whole world market especially for China for example this is the car then this is also the market where most of those big sedans are still being sold the rims they go from 17 to 21 inch this one here is a 20 inch rim and well it's a huge car therefore even a big tire doesn't look too huge on this very vehicle Again, you see sharp design lines floating from the front to the rear, playing with light and shadow, very neatly done. The door handles, there's a lot of special thing about that one. We'll talk about it when we get in the vehicles, I can tell you. And then a classic sedan line, they have dropped it a little bit, although they gained some headroom on the inside, so they played with the materials there. In general, if you would look underneath the surface, they use a material mix, 25% stiffer from the chassis if you compare it to the previous generation and they use steel, aluminum, carbon fiber and CFRP, so the carbon fiber reinforced plastics that it is and also magnesium. So a um, lot of different material mix 
it makes it a little bit complicated as well. We will talk about this aspect later too. And what do you think about this first design aspect here of the A8? This is really a vehicle you can talk about so much because there are so many technology features. And standing in the also, let me talk, tell you something about the all-wheel drive. So it's a permanent all-wheel drive and the usual setup is 40% of the power in the front, 60% in the rear. Can adapt a little bit, maximum to 75% in the front and in the rear maximum to 85%. Also, there's a rear axle steering available. If that is equipped with the vehicle, the rear axle can move either 5 degrees across, that is possible, so at lower speeds, and if you go for at higher speeds, then it would be maximum of 2 degrees parallel with the front wheels. So in the low speed area, also for the turning circle, it can decrease the turning circle over 1 meter. So this is really helpful, especially at low speeds, turning circle and in the city and parking in and out and so on and parallel driving, it gives you a little bit more stability. And now looking here at the rear, what did the designers do? First of all, this horizontal chrome strip, that was very important to them, that it goes all the way through the vehicle. Also the fake exhaust tips here, they put it there that they can design the vehicle in the very same way, no matter which engine they're actually using. 55 TFSI, this is the new badging. Um, it's, it has nothing to do with logic. It is just, you know, randomly and they have this, you know, like a stair step for 55 and other uh, names for the different engines. You can't really know what is which engine. I'm not really sure if that's useful that they do it. I found it better when it just says 3 liter TFSI and then you really know that's a 3 liter engine. You can see here, it's also playing with the lights. Those ones here above are also organic LED. This is also new with this very vehicle. So you have a lot of spectacle in nighttime. We can see a new kind of Audi key here, it's a little bit slimmer than the ones we know before. But of course there's also the keyless entry. Just put your hand here or then here to close it. The interesting thing is also that when you open the door, I did not do that, you know? It's like first of all you have the soft, you have the soft close, of course again all optional, and then you also have the entry help. So just very slightly. You can see, <laughs> and it comes towards you. Hmm. This is again a piece of technology where I would say that's just over the top. Then, inside of the doors, my favorite element is really this matte wood. It feels great, has a nice touch, and also it does not leave any fingerprints. Also, use of microfiber on the inside makes it very cozy. You have so much space, I'm not sure. Like, it's so slim, not sure what you should ever put in there. Small bottles fit in the lower part. And of course, a great interior finish from the building quality. Then first, interior overview. There's a new steering wheel with big holes in there. A new design approach for that. A lot of shiny or glossy black surfaces are being used. Then the seats, there are two different seats, the base seat and the super comfort seat. This is of course the super comfort seat, all optional in this very vehicle. And they hardly only use animal skin. In Germany, you can also get a fabric seat, 
that's good as a base model. But in the higher trims, only animal skin and that's of course something from the past. They should offer more sustainable seating choice, high class leatherette. Tesla has thrown out all leather. Audi does not care about that really. Mercedes offers a lot of alternatives, microfiber, good uh, leatherette, cloth leatherette mixes. But Audi says we do not care about that at all. And that's really something, you know, very strange, a very dinosaur-like approach in this case. Let's take a look here again. Single frame grille is repeating in the interior. This is a really nice feature because I like it when some elements from design repeat exterior and interior. So many different people are watching this here at the moment. And of course, I want to address every one of you because maybe you are a chauffeur and you're living in this car all day. Maybe you want to drive and buy this car yourself or maybe you're driving it at the weekend for later and in the week you are being chauffeured or maybe you're just interested in the A8 you know just as entertainment or you maybe seek to buy one in 20 years but for all of those for all of you I can tell you one of the most uh, in, uh, interesting aspects is the comfort especially already in the front seat the supplier for SIA we are made a special model at IAA they paid attention that this seat form is so suited for the body that you just feel relieved. You feel actually better when sitting in the car than sitting anywhere else. It is still a fairly low sporty seating position when you look in the front. It's also really spacious and a lot of headroom still left. I'm one meter 86 or six foot one. And of course, electronic adjustments in all levels here. You have seat massage, everything you could possibly dream of. The seat massage, by the way, is activated just with a hot key right there. I think it's an easy solution. And, uh, yeah, it's already starting. And um, maybe we meet again in 10 minutes and then we will continue this review. Or I'll just review it further while my back is being worked on. It's a really great feeling. And you can also adjust the steering wheel in all four ways, putting a little bit more towards you. Soon also more deals to all those instruments and touchscreens we have in this car. But the funny thing is really, it is somewhat a sovereign feeling when sitting here, but at the same time, it does feel somewhat sporty. And that indeed does reflect the overall driving characteristics. Cockpit overview, really impressive for the first look. So many horizontal lines here, this matte aluminum, then again, so many straight lines right there. And then this one floating line with so many black glossy elements. They look great when they are clean. However, they are prone to scratches and also prone to fingerprints. Of course, you always have to use the microfiber tissues. You can also look at the steering wheel with those huge gaps right there. Um, you know, you should not do this while driving and I'm not even sure if it's good because just let's just think about someone does ah wait a minute my whole hands fits in there and then it's driving yeah of course that's stupid but you know people do stupid things and maybe you should design a steering wheel in the way that you cannot do any stupid things my favorite feature is still the single frame grille in the very front here the digital cockpit is standard equipment and it looks of course amazing now with this marina in Valencia, the setup here when we see the blue water, you cannot get any analog gauges anymore. Then two screens right there is 10 inch and 8.6 inch. The upper one is still for the infotainment system, soon also details to that. And the lower one is let's say a little bit more adaptive. Usually it remains here in this climate control setup where you can still use it. And the difference is also the lower one has a haptical feedback and also this clicking sound. So you get somewhat feedback in your finger and also acoustically, where the upper one is just normal glass screen. And the lower one also adapts more to what is actually uh, happening. There's also a vast camera system available, soon more details to that. And in the lower part, there's an automatic shifting lever. You just pull it backwards, nicely designed. Big middle console, also here with adaptive beverage holders. And normal glove box in the front, not too, mu too much space. So for being so big as a vehicle, you do not have too many areas where you can actually put things. So here we have the digital cockpit. You can use the 
keys at the steering wheel to zoom in and out. Of course, you also have, to have different views available. For example, if you want to have the GPS smaller and speed and RPM a little bit bigger, that's also possible. And you can also, for example, control everything from here when you want to go to a last navigation or something. So the top screen here, very responsive, also works like a smartphone. And wow, the visualization is just superb. Wow. Also with some subtle clicking sound. This is the basic app view here, for example. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth, but also with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto if you put in the cable. In this home app, you also have uh, other vehicle, for example, suspension selects. Here, those are the different driving modes. Um, you can lift the standard air suspension up, depending on the situation. And by the way, if you drive faster than 120 kilometers, then it also goes down 20 millimeters automatically. So many things to control in here, but I think, you know, the basic things are just always the GPS and telephone. And the rear view camera, you can also click it by activation, that's good. On the right side, you have this drone view from above. On the left side, high resolution, normal rear view. And you can also activate the fake 3D view that's on the left side now. And this is creating this 3D image of vehicle. There are cameras all around the car. And this is, of course, super impressive and gives you even, you know, a better feeling for where is the car actually at. And considering the size of the vehicle, this really helps you not to touch anything you really do not want to touch. So here, fake drone view from above and fake drone view from behind at the very same time. What do you think? Also in the 3D view, you can actually turn around, you can use a touch control to take a you know, visualization here around the vehicle, pretty impressive. You can even zoom in and out just a little bit to look at the tires, for example. At the fake drone view from above, on the right side, you can also see a warning when one or two of the tires are approaching the pavement. And you can also, when you click on this very detail, see, for example, the rear or here in the front, the front tires, and then we can when we turn them, you also see how they approach the pavement or not. So when you really have time to look at those systems, you should actually be able to avoid all scratches also to the alloys. So the lower part here again, you click it and you also get some feedback then right here when you control the temperature. Um, no knobs for the temperature. This is of course always open for discussion which one do you prefer or what do you think? You just leave it on auto and that's basically it. Here also seat heating, seat cooling is available. So many things you can do. The drive slack below that, that is the one that is more than again for the upper screen. So you see that the lower screen remains this way. Here you can, for example, also open and close the rear shade for the rear passengers. So this is really a climate control center. The only knob that is left is here for the volume and also you can click right or left to have the next sound. And there's also some interaction between the lower and the upper screen. For example, I click here in the low part and then I can activate the heated steering wheel in the upper part with a nice visualization again. So this would be playing with lower and upper. Um, however, you can also basically make it the other way around. For example, when you're here for a search, you know, search an address, let's say, for example, you want to go to Berlin, then you have the GPS here in the upper part, but then the keyboard is in the lower part. You see, for example, you can then put in here, like here, oh, sorry, like Berlin or Barcelona, uh, there it is, Berlin. And uh, then you can navigate to that. So this is where it actually um, you know, reacts together. You can also use this writing function. Then the lower pad is a writing touch screen. Um, so if I want to go to Hamburg, for example, and I write in H, huh. A, huh. M, M, B, B, U, <laughs> Hamburg or oh. L. And this is the intelligence search. And e. this is really also, you see, taking different countries into uh, 
uh, into consideration. So here, and then I could, uh, for example, navigate to Hamburg. So this is also this, this intelligent search, which is very interesting because you do not have to put in the designated country before. But of course, there's also the classic function. So this is also one example where both screens can play together. So this middle armrest, pretty massive. You can put it a little bit higher as it is here right now. And it's a very interesting mechanism. So you can put it backwards here just a little bit and it moves lower at the very same time. And then you can also open it, but both sides individually. So a little bit complex this whole mechanism because when you put the front part, you can either move it upward and or backward again, and then also up all the way. And then you have some space inside, USB ports too. You can let your smartphone clip in here. And then you can also see how, how massive this uh, whole construction is. Again, the whole interior building processing, the build quality is really superb. At some point, again, you wonder, <laughs> it's really complicated sometimes. Now let's get in the rear. Again, long wheelbase version right here. You can easily get inside. This is the big advantage. A lot more space in the rear. Also this shade here I've shown you in the very uh, beginning. Then you, can, you also have this, you know, this entry help when you open the door again. And well, I've, I let the seat as I would be driving. There's still so much room then for my knees. It would also work in the non-long wheelbase version. However, you have more flexibility here. The question is really, uh, are you using it as a chauffeur car or not? That's really the main question for going for the L version or not for the L version. It is also very comfortable here in the rear. Again, there are different uh, benches available. Uh, you can also have, you know, a basic rear bench. And uh, if you want to you know, go with three people, then you have this possibility to have the uh, one middle console where you can still use three seats, but can fold it down. And this one here, as we have it here today, I'll soon show you that this one here is the pure single seat setup. You can also electronically adjust and uh, even here, put some lying position. You can really change then if you want to relax or want to sit more upright. And that, you know, works pretty easily. And again, the so Audi tablets, all optional again, if you want to have some infotainment here. You could also theoretically put out those tablets, tablets that works as well. But then again, you know, as a standard luxury sedan, that's how you do things without thinking about it. But if you look at my knees, for example, for taller people, it would actually be suitable to be chauffeured in, an, in a higher car, in an SUV. And if you think about new ele electric vehicle concept, for example, which sit a little bit higher, this would actually offer more comfort. So with all comfort, you still have to think about, this is how you've been building luxury sedans for decades. And this doesn't mean it's the best thing, but of course, when you do it that way, they tried to use this concept here and make it as comfortable as possible. So we were recently asked for that, that we should also show that there's not only in the front, even in the rear, there's some makeup mirrors or maybe to check for before the next meeting, is my hair all right? And that works pretty well. And another perspective on the other side, and I really have to say about this lying seating position when you, you know, put the seat more in the back, I found it a little bit strange. So I feel super comfortable in the normal position here. It is already somewhat a laying back position with those very soft uh, cushions for the head. But when you put it more to the rear, it somehow feels you know, a little bit strange, but maybe that's just up to me. You see this one here is the version where you have really the two single seats and you cannot flip this uh, in this middle part up. There's also a version where you can flip this up and then have basically like a emergency middle seat belt. And again, in the very base A8, you would have just a bench that goes through. So different possibilities here. Um, there are even people with two or three child seats in an A8. You have the Isofix anchor points here in the outside seats. So depending on your purpose. Armrest here, inductive charging of the phone is here. This one here is this control pad that you can change the seats. 
if I really need, uh, you know, another electronic device here, which I can put out through um, in the rear, this is again a question if, is it really too much? I mean, I can also hold it in my hand uh, and then, for example, uh, change the temperature here or also seat heating, even seat cooling for the rear seats. That's really fancy, of course, and hey, please put the seat a little bit higher. No, that doesn't work yet, but of course that's also something what the manufacturers are working on. Um, for some commands it does work, for example for the GPS, but not yet for the, for the climate. I mean, that would be also you know, a good solution to do it. Well, of course, you could also leave it cleanly and then um, uh, put it here in, inside again to leave it as it is. And then you can just also use it as it is right here. So a lot of playing around, of course, with technology. Again, the question is, is it fancy or is it a little bit too much? I think there's just different opinions here. And here again at daylight, beverage holders and also plug and 12 volt power supply. And also to show you this flipping mechanism again, well, it goes quite fast. Not sure what you should store there, maybe a, a tablet or something. And you always discover something new. For example, this one here, you can still flip it up, not entirely hide it, but there's some more storage space beneath it. The trunk can be opened right here or also with a key. Paint, by the way, is called florette silver. So then it flips up automatically and the size is standard 505 liters with a nice cover right here, aluminum style. Below that some you know, tire repair kit. You could also put a replacement tire but it seems a little shallow for that. You can also f use those fix fixation mounts but again this is really rather average as for the space. Here a hanger for a bag for example to secure some stuff. You know, at some point this classic sedan building form also has its disadvantages and that is of course here with the overall quite limited trunk. So what about the engines? Um, it's actually not too hard to remember because on the petrol and on the diesel side there's either a 3 liter 6 cylinder or a 4 liter 8 cylinder and the petrol will also get the 6 liter 12 cylinder. So this one here, the 3 liter 6 cylinder, 340 horsepower and this one is the one that will later also come as a plug-in hybrid with 449 horsepower and acceleration 4.9 seconds to 150 kilometers just approximately of electric range and then the 4 liter 8 cylinder will have 460 horsepower and the 12 cylinder will have 585 horsepower. And the diesels, the 3 liter one, 286, and the 4 liter, 433 horsepower. The automatic transmission, because a lot of torque here is involved, always the torque converter, by the way. And what else is interesting here, technology wise? Well, they have the first vehicle that uses a 48 volt board net. That means all the electronics are working on this, you know, higher volt scale, because, for example, they increase the sailing or coasting function. But when you leave the throttle, the car is not running on the normal combustion engine, but just rolling and having like this a little hybrid, so called so called mild hybrid. This mild hybrid system is introduced for all of the engines. And this, for example, also helps you, you know, when accelerating out very slowly, that you know some more electricity is being used. Again, there's just a very small battery for that. It's not a real plug-in hybrid like we see later with this very vehicle, also with this very engine. But this mild hybrid system is also supposed to save about fuel 0.7 liters on 100 kilometers, at least on paper. But then again, for the normal ignition, they still use the 12 volt bottlet too. And that raises the question, hmm, they use both now, basically, that makes the car even more complicated. And as we have so many complicated things in this vehicle, the question is, who should ever service this vehicle? And if something breaks down, I mean, I can't even imagine that even the Audi dealers can really fix everything this car has when it fails somehow. Of course, Audi thinks about, you know, our car is never failing anywhere and everything is perfect. 
But of course you have to think about when you make a car so extremely complicated and so full packed with technology, what will happen on the long term run? I'm just raising this question. I can't have the answer for you yet. That has to be seen in the coming years. But of course I would like to invite you for the discussion. Do you like more features, 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 features? Or do you also see a little bit of the risk in that and what you think about getting too complicated? Put me your comments to that in the comments box below. And now let's take the A8 for a spin, the A8L, the long wheelbase model. Of course we do need all the assistance systems here in the traffic of Valencia. But I get the warning for example when the car is next to me, especially tricky in the very big roundabout. And this 3 liter engine, 6 cylinder, 340 horsepower will go to 105.7 seconds. So uh, really strong in the power output and that rather sounds like a sports car but of course you rather would use it as a vehicle to relax. I also put the consumption now to zero, you can see what we score in our test round here so far. When we're standing still here at the traffic light, you hardly hear anything although the traffic is really passing by uh, fastly just all around us. But this is an island of calmness this week. I think this is also one of the, um, you know, the big advantages. Not only the passive noise insulation, but also the active noise cancellation. So actually both systems are working here. It is somewhat a big car for the city, for sure. Um, but you know, the assistance systems keep you safe if you have them. And so you also don't feel Know, too overwhelmed so if you concentrate really on driving that's that's basically still okay of course smaller cars are always handier for the city and also if you look to the rear um, there's a slim back mirror and also the uh, the rear the rear window it doesn't have the best overview that's a disadvantage also looking to the sides those pillars are really blocking your view so this is also a car where you rather rely on those assistance systems. If you don't have them, maybe really not the best. Then we're getting on this semi or P motorway, let's call it that way. We got the adaptive air suspension, which is standard equipment. And this is really guaranteeing a floating ride. Soon I can also show you about the other systems so that are or will be available because there's this active suspension available, the AI, which is even taking it a step further, for example, um, then allowing some special safety function that the car lifts up in the, on the side in case of a crash and also the AI suspension is foreseeing what is happening on the road and then adapting. What I've just felt, by the way, um, I wanted to make an uh, overtaking process here and want to change the lane and the car was actually realizing that another vehicle was approaching from behind and it's not only that I saw, for example, those warnings in the side mirrors, there was even a resistance in the steering wheels. The car was basically telling me, maybe it's not the best if you would change the lane right now. I could still see that, you know, be perfectly fine and that it would still be working. But then again, the car does more. Maybe sometimes more than you want to, but you have the possibility to switch those systems off. Um, for example, here at the column next to the steering wheel, you can deactivate this adaptive driving assistant and then you can do actually more on your own, but you can also activate it and then you have somewhat like uh, you know an assisted driving you see here the steering works that I'm kept in the lane here this is not uh, meant to drive all autonomously this was just for demonstration purpose so don't do it please I was just showing you that it basically works so far those assistance systems they are all meant that you still drive yourself this 
new level three autonomous driving is not available yet to the time frame we are testing the car, but we'll soon have also a demo for you where we show what it's actually capable of and you know then you can really choose if you want to have it at a later stage or not. This is also somewhat um, typical for nowadays car times. In past years you got everything and then basically development was standing still for this vehicle. Now technologies are pushed on the market sometimes earlier than they are fully ready because the manufacturers they have to keep up the pace you know the pressure is rising especially for new technologies and so sometimes they say ah you know this technology will be available for this vehicle but not at the moment but maybe next year and of course especially when we're talking about electronic systems it's important that they also offer that you can implement it later on this is also another question of course or another issue now driving on the motorway, 120 kilometers an hour, and the road is really very rough. And considering that, it's still super silent in the vehicle and really floating with the air suspension. That's so super comfortable. So the A8 is really also a king of serenity, that's for sure. So driving-wise, there's hardly anything that can keep up with this super sovereign feeling. Well, at the same time, it is also somewhat sporty because the steering wheel reacts very well. It feels sportier than, than some way smaller vehicles, actually. And this is due to this progressive steering, which does not have any dead zone. You can really have a good connection from driver, car and the road. And also, you don't have to turn the steering wheel that much. Later on, I'll also show you a demo. This car here also has it. The rear axle steering, which is a fantastic system. And when I'm driving faster, it steers parallel front and rear tires. Not the same degree, of course. And when I'm driving slowly, it goes across to reduce the turning circle. We will later on have a handling course where we show you how this will really affect if you turn off and on which you couldn't do usually, but here we have more possibilities because they organized some special testing facilities for us. So, a lot of assistance systems, great sound insulation, such a sovereign ride. Those are definitely the main aspects of this vehicle. But from, you know, at any time, you can also push the issue a little bit more and drive it sportier and this was also something I felt already in the in the previous A8 generation here for example driving the column a little bit faster now and it's still very comfortable also for for your passengers for example even if you drive a little bit faster and that's of course also very important especially if you are the person that is being chauffeured in the rear you know, I've also driven the S-Class or the BMW 7 Series. There's always the question now, what is the best one? Yeah, well, very strange here, close to Valencia, they are burning the fields. As far as, no, that's not, it's not allowed anymore, isn't it? Maybe if you are a Spanish environment lawyer, give us some information in the, in the comments, if that's still allowed. Because here now, wow, everything is burning. A lot of fog and stuff. Really astonishing. So, what about setting the cruise control? It's of course an adaptive cruise control built in here, and then I can relax even more. About this autonomous driving again later on a demo. I would actually embrace a traffic jam pilot because this is really useful if you are in situations where you do not want to drive yourself. Here the cruise control is also quite intelligent one. Wow, it's like, what the hell is going on here? So there was just a traffic sign reducing the speed limit. First 80, now 60, and then also the car is adjusting the speed um, according to it to the next traffic sign limit. If you have the, you know, here for, for example, 
map data is also playing along with it and now it's set on the new speed. So this also helps you to avoid speeding tickets. The question is, as always, how much do you want this assistance? Well, it's like getting dark, or getting night here now. So some really say, yeah, you know, I want a lot of assistance. And some say, I want to drive myself, just drive, and that's it. It's really up to you. I mean, times are changing somewhat, but still there are a lot of cars out there where you can still pick. And of course you can shut them on and off. But then the question is, would you buy so many assistance systems if you shut them off anyway? So what you also feel, especially the biggest difference to the previous generation A8, which I really liked, mm, the previous generation was still more or less a classic sedan, which you would just drive, you know? And this one here is so fully packed of electronic stuff. Mm, at some point it can be distracting, and you sometimes feel a little bit that the car would be overruling you. Then again, in some situations that might be useful, but in some situations you might think, hmm, do I really want that? I think to me it's also a difference if you talk about fully autonomous driving, where we say, I don't want anything to do with it, just, you know, do something else while being in the car. That's the future or where we are heading to. Or really driving yourself. This one here is here a mix in between. And for example, blind spot monitor, I think is great help. Or also maybe that you know that you cannot move the steering wheel then in a very dangerous situation that much. Again, you can argue pro and con. So a lot of discussion really uh, this one here, the AH serves also as an you know basically as an experiment for the whole model range. So this one has all the technology and which technologies are really accepted by the customers and play out great, then will also take place in the other vehicles. So this is also you know something what, what they are using this car for. So now I'm reducing the speed on my own. <laughs> don't don't take the real, you know, the, the other systems for it. Theoretically, this car can do so much, but again, it is really a lot of fun to drive. So you do want to drive it still on your own. And you also, you know, even with an air suspension, when you're in this uh, slalom, it's not wobbling too much to left and right. But this is, you know, this is so characterizing about this vehicle of the assistance systems. When I'm doing this now, what I just did, slalom here, yeah, there's, you know, a drawn line. First of all, I get resistance from the steering wheel. Thomas, you're evil, should not do that. Then I even get some feedback in the, in, the, in, the, in the throttle pedal, like Thomas not doing that. So this car is constantly reminding you of what you are doing wrong. <laughs> and yeah, this can definitely be annoying. Again, it is, it is a really fine line between helping you to stay alive and others to stay alive and just annoying you with too much electronics. Um, maybe it will change if you own this car for one or two years and you're getting used to all of the system it has. Or maybe you decide, you know, those systems I, I'm, I'm really happy to have and others maybe not. But it's definitely uh, really interesting to experience that. You do feel the weight of the car, that's no question, even if the suspension is great and they've tuned everything, the steering is great, um, you still feel the weight of the car somehow. That's just physics for sure, you know. And if you want a little bit more agile, then you would have to, to step down um, a segment. This is still the A8, still for chauffeur purposes and then you also have to, you know, to, to balance out what you would be expecting. Then again, as the car's bigger, a little bit heavier, gives you again more sovereignty, and especially just running straight. It's funny to say that uh, it's a specialty of a car to run straight, but in this case is 
there's probably hardly any other vehicle that is so sovereign and comfortable just when running straight over the bumps, sound insulation wise. So you really feel like nothing could touch you in this vehicle, which again could be dangerous also if you consider other participants in the traffic system when you feel, let's say, maybe even a little bit arrogant in this car because you say, know, I'm king of the world, there's nothing touching me anyhow, and you maybe get disconnected from the rest of the traffic. Again, I always want to present you pros and cons about each feature of a car, and then we can surely discuss it. But overall, I think still a great, fun, luxury sedan. So much effort, so much technology went in this vehicle. Um, but as I said, in, in, for, for some other features, we're looking at them in detail. It's not that, for me personally, I would say I do embrace every single feature because what I do also embrace is simplicity. You know, making it easy for the customer. And one thing is for sure, this car here is exactly the opposite of simplicity. Now to the more dynamic driving so far, when I want to score as little consumption as possible, 8 liters on 100 kilometers is possible, motorway cruise control, the minimum consumption. But let's also do some acceleration and see what the power you have. Well, that was 80 to 100, also saw it in the display, and of course with 3 liters of displacement six cylinders that's no problem the acceleration difference by the way from the AA to the A8L is 0 0.1 seconds so the A8L is of course a little bit heavier so it's 5.6 or 5.7 seconds this is the difference then so you you wouldn't really feel that even if you drive the cars directly next to each other also the driving characteristics especially with the rear axle steering is not really so different from an a8 and an a8l so let those guys overtake us and you can also see here the blind spot monitor again and we can do one more acceleration for you and a little bit slower so slow down just a little bit and then Let's put in the sport mode. You see the S gauges then. Then the RPMs are turned up higher. Car shifts up later and down earlier again. And you can also stress this with a drive select and then put in the dynamic mode. Then it automatically goes also into this S shifting mode and also stiffens up the suspension. So let's do some acceleration from 60. Let's go. Fifteen already and you maybe heard it also in this the dynamic mode it's a little bit harsher so let's get off the motorway here because in this dynamic mode we also have the stiffer suspension and for example when we're here now in the roundabout see if I can get some more feedback from the suspension yes it's a little bit So stiffer, but there the car is leaning still a little bit to the right. I mean, it's in a luxury sedan and driving 70 kilometers an hour in a roundabout. More feedback also from the engine. Now here in the corners, I do feel the weight of the car. It does get pushed to the side. And here also, if you're driving, you know, rather comfortably, then it's rather annoying when you have this late shifting up. So just for some sporty actions, it makes sense. But as soon as you, you know, want to relax, be relaxed a little bit more, then it's better to use the shifting pedals, for example, or then go back to the normal mode again. I mean, even if you are in a normal mode, for example, let's go to the auto mode, here normal again, Whew, silence. 
then you always can just use the shifting packs here. Um, it says in the manual gears. And then you have a better acceleration right there. And if you want to cancel it again and just have the auto mode, then hold the right pedal just for a few seconds and then automatically goes back to the normal driving mode again. So, and I can really stress that the basic driving characteristic of this vehicle is also somewhat sporty, although it's a big luxury sedan. Yet again, you cannot defy physics, so the weight will always be felt. And if you want it really sportier, then you have to go a segment below and not pick the highest luxury sedan segment. With the new AI suspension, by the way, that will optionally be available, you will even more even out those tilting in the corners because then this electromechanical additional elements on all of the different suspens suspension um, parts, those will actually rule against the tilting effect. Also, when you, for example, go to a traffic light, usually the car leans forward and then this one will be evened out. So this one will also be a part of this suspension. We'll also see a demonstration of that, but there's no price for that yet and probably it will be very expensive. And again, also symptomatic for new vehicle construction that not all of the new features are directly available from launch because the pressure on the manufacturers to bring those features faster on the market and to be able to... Oh, that squirrel was lucky. Good that we reduce the speed for the cyclist here. Here, for example, situation, you know, when you're in a higher gear, for example, you can also use the, the pedals then, shift down, shift up, also use it as a sports car. You can shift down again with the pedals, throttle, up, bam. You do hear a nice sound from the engine, however, as it's so well insulated from the driver's cabin, you don't feel too much. Those windows are really so thick that it's really kept calm all the time. Now some pittoresque landscape here. We went out a little bit from Valencia and we can have some more fun here. Let's test one more with the automatic driving mode. So the car adapts automatically to the different surfaces. But of course if you want it sportier go back to the drive slack, get the dynamic mode, and I also get better torque, accelerate out of the corners even better. And again, this usual very soft air suspension is way stiffer than. Those are the right corners to test it now. And we did have some big cars where I really could say, hmm, I remember driving in the normal E-Class Coupe, for example, where I really felt, ah, you know, it's not really that much fun to drive corners still. And the same would also count for the normal S-Class, for example. But here again, it is still fun to corner this vehicle and we are not driving an S8. We did have an S8 once in our testing, that was also super fun. But this one here is even the A8L. But of course, this one is also helped by the rear axle steering. So especially if you got an A8L, I think this is one feature uh, I, could, I could really recommend to have the rear axle steering because it's really increasing the agility especially uh, you know for the, for the low speed corners that's always using this maximum five degree angle i mean we are five meters 30 in length you hardly feel it and that is something very astonishing so let's see if we can take one more last overtaking for you here of course always safety first and auto fuel when the corners are too narrow it's just too dangerous. 
especially when you have some facing cyclist, for example. Now we can see them a little better. Oh, there's no one coming. And you can really forget that you're driving a long luxury stun. Maybe having a rich businessman now in the rear. How are you doing, sir? I'm the transporter. We have to go a little bit faster now to deliver the package. So, if you want to feel like Jason Statham for, for once in a while, then it's maybe the right thing to do. You just have to organize your ride in the A8L. <laughs> I would like to help you with that, but the only thing I can do is deliver you this review. And maybe you can still feel like being in the driver's seat then here with me. So enjoy some last corners for today's riding episode. And now we want to test the AI Active Suspension. It's not equipped with our very test vehicle, but here in a separate demo car, because the suspension comes a little bit later. And Christoph Görle will explain us, because he is actually the developer for this suspension, how does it really work. And we will run over some obstacles without it once, and then with the suspension. So you may, can maybe give us an insight. Yes, we have an active suspension system. It means we have the standard air springs and in addition we have four electric motors. And with these four electric motors we can actively compensate for unevenness in the road so that we can drive more comfortable. Here in this parkour what we can do is we can turn on and turn off the predictive information for our active suspension and then we can drive over these bumps and then we can see the difference how it is with and without active suspension with predictive and without predictive so information. So usually you, you couldn't do this, you couldn't deactivate it, it's just possible here in this test car now. Actually even the customer uh, can do it. The active suspension is always active. What we do is we activate and deactivate the predictive information and it's also possible for the customer. Ah, okay, why would the customer deactivate it? We recommend to have it activated. It's also activated as a standard, but perhaps some people like to feel the bumps if they drive over bumps so they can deactivate it. It's also to feel the difference. Okay, well, I'm not sure if a customer would do that, but at least you would have the possibility. Let's test how the difference is. Okay, so first it's with deactivated predictive information. Over 12 centimeters? This one here is 12 centimeters high, the next one is 8 centimeters high. So we feel the bumps, now we go back. I mean, considering the uh, air suspension, which is uh, also standard, it's already you know, very comfortable to go over the bumps anyway. Yes, the standard air suspension is already a very comfortable car. And with this active suspension, we are again a bit um, improving the comfort up to 6 Hz. Up to 6 Hz we can actively control our actuators, so we are still more smooth in the vehicle body. So this is for bumps that are more in the longer amplitude, it's not for small potholes? It's not. The active suspension will not compensate actively sharp potholes. It's up to 6 Hz, so we can compensate run, uh, road unevenness up to 6 Hz and 
at higher frequencies we have the good standard comfort of the air spring system. So let's see, now with activated. With activated we will see that in front of the bump the vehicle will be raised so that we're in a higher position so we have more travel. So here we see this, it's raising and now we feel a, a lot less of the, of the impact. And here this one, you feel almost nothing of the impact. Yeah, it really would be like the, the car is really going straight and you could also see that a little bit from the outside even. So a pretty impressive effect. Um, do you have anything in mind um, maybe for the future? Could this theoretically also work with potholes with a different system? Do you, do, are you thinking about something on technology in this case? Actually potholes are already very good with our passive um, configuration of our car. So here we, we uh, actively control as we said, up to six hertz. Um, so, for our, uh, in our opinion, that's a good, good setting at the moment. Yes. Thank you for the insight. You're welcome. And now we want to take a look at the driver assistance systems and Matthias Pfom is the developer of this very system here because we want to test the cross traffic alert so we are next to some walls we can't see anything and something will be approaching us won't it yeah the intersection assist helps us in city scenarios so we are right now in a really narrow street we cannot look to the left and to the right but the audi is equipped with sensors so we are now want to enter the road in front of us and the sensors, they already can see what's going on. So we, we have, don't have any chance to see if there are bicycle drivers coming or other vehicles, but the sensors, they, they, they are um, looking into the street and they show us in the M Audi MMI screen and as well in the in instrument cluster if there's somebody coming. We're going to see red arrows here and there when the bicycle driver will pass. Ah, we can already see it here now. So we couldn't see it before, but you know, the, the front sensors are actually, you know, maybe a meter more on the front, so they can, can already see that very well. Mm -hmm. um, when there will there also be an acoustic warning? Yeah, I'm going to show it now to you. There will a box approach from the left simulating crossing traffic and the intersection assist warns the driver and brakes automatically. So let's see what happens. Station feel bereit. Well, we have a, su a crashed A8. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not. I'm now entering the intersection, and you see it breaks automatically. And here there's a pop-up in the instrument cluster, and also there's a warning in in the head-up display. So the driver is warned, and there's also a brake intervention that stops the vehicle in these situations. And the this, this same thing also working with uh, bicycles or also pedestrians? It's working for bicycles and for, for vehicles. Mm -hmm. But and pedestrians not so far, That's too, are they too small? Yeah, we use the radar sensor and we need uh, um, objects that reflect the radar radiation. And people do not reflect that? Usually not, yeah. Ah, okay. So you basically need a, a metal bicycle then. So if you would have, an <laughs> so you need some kind of material that is basically you know artificial to reflect that. Then. Yeah, we are warning objects that are moving, and that reflect the radar, mm -hmm. ah, like okay. bicycles and vehicles. So if you're a pedestrian, too bad. <laughs> you have to pay more attention then. So and uh, you know. This one here I've been talking about uh, quite a lot of times because uh, I've read about this, you know, that the mm -hmm. suspension can also um, uh, raise itself. Yeah. So uh, this is the next step then? Yeah, exactly. In the next scenario we are going to see present side scenario. In this week we have active suspension, Audi AI active suspension. And the radar sensors, they recognize uh, an, an impending crash and raise the vehicle up eight centimeters in just half a second. The, so the reason for that is the c car is strongest in the lower part and if the other car hits us at the lower part we can decrease the force to the passengers up to 50 percent. So I was uh, always wondering, so it is said when you 
are crashing frontally into a car and then you know the other car is at the side that the side is actually the the weaker point so that's basically exactly, the exactly yeah it's it's a weaker point we, because we don't have that much space between um, yeah the the crash and the driver and this has effect to all passengers yeah you know there are systems that only work for others but in this audi system it's good ah, the box is coming Woo. Ah. yeah and did you feel the seat belt tensioner yeah it, it presses yeah, yeah. you in the seat the backrest moves in the perfect position and yeah if the windows were open it they would also close automatically mm -hmm. uh, my question there is of course uh, for the box or mm -hmm. be it the normal car in this mm -hmm. situation what happens actually to the other car because i can't imagine that it would be better for the other vehicle when it crashes basically a little bit you know at the at the side pillar under the vehicle now the the crash is also optimized for the other vehicle and yeah they have enough impact zone so yeah there's no bad effect to the other vehicle so you say uh, it's basically okay for the other vehicle because the front crash is basically in a better situation anyway yeah exactly mm -hmm. unless it's a very small vehicle no we we have tested this and it's uh, good for the other vehicle too i sure hope so pretty interesting system and another assistance system if i want to get out of the vehicle and the cyclist is approaching see here i get the warning right there also with the red warning strip right there and also what you maybe didn't see but what I felt the moment I opened the door there was a little delay so it didn't really cut me off totally but as I wanted to open the door usually you have this you know this help you and directly opens but in this case there was a second of delay so it didn't really open instantaneously and now we want to experience the rear axle steering or the all-wheel steering and I'll start in the parkour and this vehicle is equipped in a way that we can actually deactivate this system so we drive first one time without it and then with the system unless we're busted by the police now yeah we have yeah we have um, two times around ah, okay. two times that's right. so really strict regulations here <laughs> so let's start and also pay attention how do I have to work with the steering wheel when I drive around a second time you will see that I have to work less I mean it doesn't feel uncomfortable the steering is really light to control so it's actually no problem so you wouldn't exactly say it's, um, it's hard to get this vehicle around but the big difference will really be in when we have the system turned on. Usually, as a customer, you could not turn it off when you have ordered it. It's just here in this demo car. And otherwise, I mean, if you really order the system, it doesn't really make sense to turn it off then anyway. Again, I can stress what I said earlier, that the car, although it's pretty long, it still feels quite sporty. The most interesting part is really now here this U-turn because the turning circle is reduced by just over a meter and here no chance to get around it. You have to go in a reverse gear. So, and then go to the front again. And Klaus Diepold, the developer of this system, help us, helps us now to activate it. It should stop. So we stand still. Yeah, it's on now. Okay, let's see what's the difference now. So here we go. And you can already see in the first corner that they have to work less with the steering. You even feel it while driving that the rear axle is somewhat active. It doesn't exactly feel like a go-kart, but I have really way less effort to turn around in the corners. The maximum degree angle is 5 degrees. What I would like to know is um, 
does that actually create also less friction for the tires or is it at some point that you have more friction? Do you mean the movement? I guess the movement of the wheel is like uh, you bring the rear in the right direction where you actually want to move the car. So it should not be more stress for the tires. So it could actually reduce friction maybe even when you, because you know, it's you're not scratching the tire that much over the ground, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I would not, uh, I'm, I'm not pretty sure about the tires behavior. I'm not from the tires development. Point. Yeah. So, and now? That might well, work. That, that may work. Yeah. We can try it. We can also check the camera system, see if it's working. There we go. Uh, let's see. Top view. About the pole. Uh, it's, it's very close to the pole, but it's. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, it's close, Good but job. it, yeah, it exactly works. So, I think this is also definitely the, the biggest change here. So the turning circle, when it really gets very narrow. And of course, if I would have made the parkour here about speed, I could theoretically also be a little bit faster. So the new generation of the Audi A8 will be the first vehicle on public roads with so-called level 3 autonomous driving. And what does that actually mean? The difference between level 2 and level 3 is that when you activate the system, I can do it here also on this demo. Um, I also can change the view to the inside. So when I activate the system, the car itself is actually responsible also in case of a crash. And that's the difference. With level two, you are still responsible even when those assistance systems are running. Here, in that case then, for example, with the traffic jam assist, the car will be responsible. And this is basically a regulation thing also, you know, concerning the law. Of course, the regulations are not that far that all of those systems would be working right now. So the technology is even further than the regulations would allow. But what will then be possible in 2018 is that this traffic jam assist, there are some on the market already. They run at very low speeds, 15, 20 kilometers, for example. Here it will also run up to a speed of 60 kilometers an hour. And then you can really, as we see it here at the moment, take off the hands from the steering wheel. You will not be allowed to use the smartphone or to read the newspaper, but you can, for example, use the infotainment screen of the car and uh, maybe even watch a TV, which is also included in the A8 if you want so, and then just can relax in the traffic as far as possible. We also have a sensor view here, so all the blue marked areas mean that this is actually covered by those different sensors. We'll soon take a look at those. And the only thing that the system is not able to do at the moment is the lane changing. And so if you would still miss that and wouldn't overtake the system yourself, then this happens. The car says, okay, there's something I can't really handle. But instead of just driving against the wall, I just st stop the car, activate the warning indicators and tell the driver, please overtake now. And everything you've seen in blue on those screens, well, those were actually the sensors, but not just one sensor and also not one kind of sensors. And Christian Schönhuber, who's a developer of the assistance systems, will also explain, well, which one do we actually have? So, as far as I understood, you are using a mix of different sensors that you can also have a so-called redundancy of the system. That's right. Well, the new Audi A8 has a huge amount of uh, sensors. On the front, we've got the radar sensors with a range of about uh, 200 meters. Uh, in the middle of the car, there's the laser scanner uh, with a range of about 80 to 100 meters. Um, then we've got 12 uh, ultrasonic sensors uh, around the car and uh, on the side of the car we've got mid-range radars uh, for detecting obstacles on the rear or on the side of the uh, car. Um, they have got a range of about 70 meters. And uh, on the windscreen uh, we've got uh, the camera with a, a range of uh, 100 meters. And altogether a fusion in our brain of the new Audi A8, it's called the SATFAS. And why would you combine so many different kind of sensors? Uh, we combine them because we want to know what is the environment of the car. So we build a 360 degree picture uh, of the environment and therefore we are able to use it in our functionalities. So sometimes we've experienced just for automatic cruise controls that they fail, for example, when there's a lot of rain or there's a lot of fog, for example. So how do you cope with different, for example, weather situations or when there's dirt somewhere? 
Well, yeah, um, the radar sensors are um, used uh, with rainy weather, so they are um, better working systems than only the camera system and the windshield. Um, and the laser scanner uh, is able to detect uh, the sharpness of the obstacles in front of us. So then we can decide if it's a uh, lorry or it's a bicycle or it is a, a, um, a motor bicycle. And already thinking the next, next steps ahead, would it also be possible to drive fully autonomously everywhere? Or what is the biggest challenge now for the next step you have ahead? Mm -hmm. Well, today we are very happy that we can offer the customer a level 3 functionality like the Audi AI traffic jam pilot. Um, but there are still um, efforts to make uh, the next steps to level 4 or level 5. Um, and even the legal framework has to be cleared first. So, thank you so much for the insight and of course, looking forward to your feedback. Would you like to drive autonomously even already today? Or would you be happy with this traffic jam pilot? Tell me. And now to our conclusion for today, the all new generation of the Audi A8. So, first of all from the exterior, a really sharp design, a classic sedan for sure, but with a lot of elegance and modern features. Rather an evolution than a revolution. The interior is really way different than the previous generation, all digitalized. You cannot get any analog gauges, for example, those two new big screens. They got some very interesting solutions there for sure. For example, that you can type in the address very comfortably with the second screen, those stuff, for example, or that this is a solution of the screen where you can still quite comfortably enter or change the temperature. However, you also can think about or discuss, is it maybe too much? Is it too complicated? I would really like to see your remarks of that in the comments. It offers a very superb comfort in the interior to the extent of a classic sedan. Because a classic sedan is, when you really look at the whole concept, not necessarily the best as for the comfort also for being chauffeured in the rear. But they, from the very traditional concept, took the best and really got the most comfortable seats there. are. Seating surface-wise, really a dinosaur. They are ignoring everything the other manufacturers are doing and also what customers demand. There are a lot of customers out there who have good money but still want to have sustainable solution and want to combine sustainability with luxury. And Audi is so far majorly ignoring this trend. Driving-wise, very sovereign car, what a ride with the air suspension. Still, it's a very sporty ride. Also, if you compare it to other big luxury sedans, even in the base models, even if it's not a super sporty model, for example. So also, if you compare it to other big luxury sedans, like a Mercedes S-Class, where you would rather need the AMG model to have a very sporty ride, this one here already combines a sporty and both a comfortable ride in the normal variants. You don't really feel a difference when you drive the A8 or A8L, especially if you have this rear axle steering. You still got a very dynamic riding impression and also the turning circle can be reduced then. So much technology they have put in the car. Very impressive for sure. And that's the other major aspect about this vehicle. It is so fully packed of technologies. If you think about the 48 volt board net, but at the same time has a 12 volt board net. Then, you know, ignoring the animal skin issue, uh, putting the petrol filters for the, you know, the, uh, the particle filters for the petrol engine only in 2018 when they really have to do it. And, you know, not in advance for a 100,000 or 150,000 euro vehicle as it stands here right now at least 150,000 euros with all the extras and stuff. And then you have to think about why are they doing that? So this car here is actually a dinosaur, full of tradition, full also of things that belong to the past. And then again, so much technology stuff that is some way, way ahead of the competition, that is in some parts really astonishing, really great. And you can also discuss at some point, is it too much? Is it over-engineered? And it is for sure a very interesting car because you really have, you know, this wide span of something totally old-fashioned and something entirely new. That makes it very interesting. But again, there's also the question, why don't they fix the basics things like, you know, 
particle filters for petrol engine also, also right now sustainable more in, you know, interior choices and stuff also bringing the cons consumption down more because the consumption overall I mean as I said earlier you can drive it with nine or ten liters this petrol engine but only if you keep it very calm if you hammer it just a little bit it well well, well way exceed and again I'm pretty certain that not Every of those customers for the Audi A8 saying, yeah, I don't care about fuel consumption, don't care about the environment. There are people also with money who care about those things. And then they also expect something more. Also the plug-in hybrid variant that is coming, you know, with about 40 kilometers of electric range, what shall you really do with that? Why don't they put, for example, a CNG engine in the Audi A8 or make it a fully electric option? Something like this is actually missing. Of course, I would like you to invite you to this discussion about this vehicle because there are so much things to discuss here. And uh, I would say, let's start with it. Go now. Tell me everything you think about this car, exterior, interior and technology-wise. And also join us on our very next episode.